I'm Sean Gawley. I'm the CEO and founder of Primer. Primer automates tasks that analysts uh, do on a daily basis using the latest uh, machine learning techniques to uh, understand language, um, to both read and write um, the kind of text that we as humans would otherwise process manually. So say you're an analyst at a bank and your job is to go through earnings transcripts and identify um, sentences that might pertain to a stock buyback. This is a long, laborious task. You've got to look through thousands of companies and you've got to read text pretty closely. Well, what we can do is to take that, that task and actually train machines um, to recognize those sentences so that the analyst then is presented with a list of companies that might be taking a stock buyback rather than having to read through those hours of text themselves. Yeah, we've got a range of different outputs you can get through. And so we've got a, 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 there's some different tasks if you look at it from an analyst perspective. One is finding text, another is identifying relationships between entities inside of text. And another task that's quite common is reconciling two pieces of information to know if they agree or disagree. So there's kind of a range of different tasks that we humans perform on text. Well, what we're able to do is to build machines that replicate these different tasks and combine them to replicate the, uh, the analyst uh, process. Now, what we've seen with universal language models has been that you're actually able to train them on, on a pretty broad range of tasks. And so this is kind of a sense of transfer learning where you can train it on one task um, and then bring it across and train it, train it again on the other, but you're not starting from zero. And so this has been the big, big breakthrough is that these models can effectively read everything and then be trained specifically for a task which requires less training data than it otherwise normally would have. If you're an analyst sitting in defense um, or intelligence, you're um, going to sit down to a, a stream of information every morning. And that stream of information is going to come from all the different sources that you're, you're analyzing and monitoring. And what, what's really, I think, there is that most of that information is not being looked at. What we're able to do is to bring all of that in into a daily briefing for the analyst, like the kind of briefings that they're producing every day. Um, as, as a one-page briefing that they can send through to their organization, outlining the key events, why they matter, how they're connected, and the key numbers and information that's pertaining inside of that. And so that's a huge step forward for the analyst. It compresses four hours of work down to about half an hour, and it frees them up to kind of do a lot of other things that are you know, potentially much more important than processing that um, original text. I think if we step back though and understand kind of you know, where we're going with this here is um, you know, ultimately um, we need to understand the things that humans are good at, the things that machines are good at, and how to interact between them. It's not a case of you know, machines replacing all of the intelligence we have. It's not a case of us being smarter than machines on everything, but it's a, it's a case of understanding about how we connect together in a way that makes us the most intelligent. We've been involved in the, in the world of uh, detection of uh, misinformation and, um, and manipulation. Um, it's kind of part and parcel of working in the information landscape these days. From our side, I think there's two, there's two sort of fights that are going on. One is for, for, for manipulation and one is for truth. And you know, we, we trade in, in algorithms that are looking to kind of understand ground truth and reality. We sell them to finance, it's incredibly important for them. Sell them to the government, it's incredibly important for them. And part of that is a battle against the, um, the forces that are looking to manipulate. So you know, th there's sort of drawing kind of battle lines here. Um, we'll, we'll take the side of truth and, and you know, um, that, that gives me optimism, it gives me hope. Um, I do think we do need these tools to help us understand the world. But we should also realize there's a lot of forces out there that are looking to manipulate the way in which we see that. And so, um, you know, that's the reality. You can't be optimistic about everything, but I think you can be optimistic um, that there's some good people putting up a good fight.